Welcome to Electron Line and, and our quest to learn how to graph polar coordinate equations. Well, now we're going to try what we call the Limaçon. Well, that's the French way of pronouncing the name. I think we can call it Limacon if you like it. Now, r equals 1 plus 2 times the cosine of theta. That's the equation we're going to try and draw. And let's see what that looks like. And to help us, we already have some uh, numbers here ready for us. We're going to try different angles starting at 0, pi 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. I also put the degree um, next to that so that we can see what that is equal to in, in number of degrees. Sometimes it's easier to follow directions in degrees rather than, than radians. And then we have the cosine of that angle calculated twice the cosine of the angle calculated, and then 1 plus twice the cosine of the angle calculated, which ultimately is r. That would then be the distance away from the origin in that particular direction, theta. All right, so let's get a different color. Let's get red. And now we're going to plot some points so we can go ahead and grab that. We're going to try and use the, the principle symmetry as well because we don't have to do the whole thing. We can do partial and then see how the rest of the curve will look like. So starting out with theta equals 0, then cosine of theta equals 1, twice is equal to 2, and then add one more is equal to 3. That means at a 0 degree angle, the point would be 3 away. So that means r, the polar coordinate r, would be 3 units away from the origin at an angle of 0 degrees. Go to an angle of 30 degrees, and of course this here would be 30 degrees. It would be 2.732, so that's between 2 and 3, kind of like over here. To an angle of, go to an angle of 45 degrees, then R would be 2.4, so at 45 degrees it would be 2.4, would be about there. At a 60 degree angle, R would be 2. At a 90 degree angle, R would be 1. So you can see that we already have this curve right here, which we can go ahead and complete now. So that's the beginning of that curve. Let's see where it ends up. At 120 degrees is equal to zero. So 120 degrees, that would be this angle right there. Then we go to zero. So then it continues on like this. At 135 degrees, which is a 45 degree angle in this direction, uh, then we have minus 0.4. So even though we're pointing in this direction, R is negative, which puts us on the other side of the curve. That puts us right about there, not quite halfway between zero and one. Then at a 150 degree angle, it's minus 0.7. So according to here, with minus 0.7, that would be right there. And finally, at a 180 degree angle, we have a minus 1. So when we're pointing in this direction, we have a minus 1, which puts us right here. We continue that curve this way. You can see that it looks like that. So that's, a, that's half of the limousine. If we then continue, then you can see that this will just continue like this. And we could probably put in some of these other points. We could put in this point right there. We can put in this point right there, this point right there, this point right there. And you can see that this is simply going to go like this. And then come this way. And like that. And that is what we call a limousine of this particular type. This, the shape of this curve will change depending upon what the numbers 1 and 2 turn out to be. So if you call this A and B, the general equation. So let me put the general equation down. So R is equal to A plus b times the cosine of theta. Depending upon the values of a and b, this will change shape. And we'll do some examples later on to show you how, what that looks like. But at least this gives you, an, again, a, an idea of how to graph some of these polar equations. You can see they make some wonderful cha shapes. Um, it's hard to say that mathematics could be wonderful sometimes, but they're pretty neat shapes sometimes, the ones that we come up with. And as you continue watching some of these videos, we'll come up with some interesting shapes as well. All right, that's how we do that. Again, all you have to do is simply start with an angle, then take the sine or cosine function, whatever it may be, of that angle. Then, of course, it's multiplied times 2. We multiply times 2, and then we add 1 to it. So this here equals r. So those are the values of r for particular values of the angle. And so, after all, it is r as a function of theta. So another way of writing that would be we're graphing r, which is a function of theta, is equal to a plus b times the cosine of theta. So we plug in a value for theta, and we'll get a corresponding value for r. And that's how we graph these.